Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monica and today we're going to be talking about relationships, red flags, things to avoid, and ways in which we can take accountability of our own uh, actions so we end up in relationships and situationships that benefit us rather than having to change who we are and losing pieces of ourselves and adding adding more into the little trauma box that we keep next to our bedside table like there goes another one there goes something else i'll never get over future me here it's a gloomy day in new york city and i'm stopping this video because i wanted to let you all know we have a sponsor so in line with a lot of the subjects that i'm bringing up in this video i wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video quilt quilt is an audio based app that focuses on social wellness it's a space to listen to share and to grow with others through daily conversations the audio format of the app helps eliminate the scroll fatigue that we all often feel while we're on our phones and it's a great tool on your journey to self-improvement which has been a long journey for me um you can't always figure everything out on your own and have and sometimes we don't have anyone to talk to so quilt makes conversations around intimacy relationships self-care careers and more super accessible and fun i've been listening in on different supportive conversations around love and career goals and you can see all the upcoming ones by clicking the calendar section in the app and browsing one quote that I'll actually be tuning into is on Wednesday, March 2nd, called Sensual Touch Temple, Worship the Temple That Is Your Body by Carly Jo Cabrera, which I'm really looking forward to because I often feel extremely disconnected from my body and sensuality. So it's been one of my major goals this year to find that within myself again. You can join too by downloading the link in my description, going to the calendar section and favoriting it so you don't miss it. So I'll see you there. And now back to the video. Um, so in general, obviously, there's things that are outside of our control. We can't control everything. We can't control everyone. We can't control if someone's coming through with negative intentions and they are evil masterminds that will disguise all of their uh, negative intentions with lies and flattery and all of that. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just end up in a horrific situation and there's nothing you could do about that and that sucks. Other times... Um, and this is where the accountability aspect of this conversation comes in. Other times, there are things that we could be doing ourselves to not end up in difficult situations. As I get older, I'm starting to recognize that a lot of relationships are mirrors of ourselves and what we allow. So if you find yourself ending up in similar dynamics time and time again, ask yourself, who's the common denominator? It's likely you, unfortunately. And that's not a dig. We've all been there. But it's just kind of like, in what ways am I allowing myself to to be walked over in what ways am I allowing myself to be taken advantage of and why do I keep attracting the same kind of person so within a lot of abusive partners and I'm, I'll be talking about uh, mostly like cis men because that's where most of my dating experiences within a lot of like just men in general and women in general because women be abusive too um, it's very like I you know if you're abusive you kind of know who to go to towards and you kind of know who's vulnerable and how to take advantage of that, whether you are an evil mastermind and you're doing it with intention or whether you have kind of like a more fraught sort of background um, and that you've yet to kind of acknowledge and you find gratification in exploiting certain power dynamics essentially and uh, manipulating and abusing people so some people just don't recognize it does not make it excusable but some people normalize the things that they saw around them growing up and recognize them as love and continue to replay those same patterns so just like other people tend to do that we often tend to do that and we tend to see love or the types of love that we experienced as love so in a lot of situations i find that if you were not properly loved and love can be expressed in so many different ways right uh, but i think there are proper ways to love someone and improper ways to love someone bell hooks all about love i think is a wonderful book if you're really trying to kind of decide for yourself what is right and what is wrong what do i want and what don't i want because uh within the book she talks about how in this society we we often think about love as this sort of amorphous intangible thing this just it's just like a feeling it's just a feeling right it's not just a feeling there are it you it, i think it benefits us to really define it for ourselves as a society to really look into what is right and what is wrong within her definitions of love love cannot coexist with abuse love cannot coexist with lying and one might think hey that's kind of really extreme you 
know, people, people are going through what they're going through. And like, it just is what it is, especially if we've been raised in environments with, with abusive parents, where we, the, the first, the first dynamic that we ever have, the most important tether, the, the one which is supposed to give us unconditional love. One may have abandoned you and the other one abused you emotionally and never allowed you to be yourself and loved you conditionally. So if you're coming from that, when you enter a, a, other types of relationships as you get older, you might find yourself replaying those things. You might find yourself ending up with individuals that mirror the dynamics that you're comfortable with, even though they may not benefit you in the long run. So something that I see a lot of people talk about and I that has happened to me often is when you find a good person, and now I'm not talking about a good guy, like the good guy that's like, I'm such a good guy. And it's just like, bro, you're a piece of crap because you were just thinking that because, you know, you have proximity to women and women speak to you that and because you're not like the quote unquote other guys that you therefore deserve something. And you were kind of spent your whole entire life fuming about the fact you've been rejected. Um, that's not a good guy. But within like you feel you meet somebody that's like a good a good person like they do the right thing for you they're looking out for you they take care of you they whatever will define these different things as we move forward in the video um within my own perception and my own opinions as to what is kind of more desirable and what's not um and what's concerning um but you finally meet someone that's just like yo they're doing the right thing why am i not into them and i think that's where the idea of soulmates of of mr or mrs right will kick you in the butt because i don't think that there is like a right person for anyone necessarily i think within the group the people that you meet in your life there will be individuals that are more right than other but i don't necessarily believe in soulmates I believe in work. I believe that relationships are work. I think when you're in that like first, like like romantic, like honeymoon phase of a relationship, of course, it's just like, it feels like, like what are the chances? There are no coincidences. This is like serendipitous. Like, oh my God, if all the people in the world, if I hadn't walked into that cupcake shop and you hadn't walked into that cupcake shop, I was supposed to like be on the train. You were supposed to be on the plane. Like what were the odds? <laughs> like, and, and we both like the same niche band. Like, wow, like, wow, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, what are the, like, you, you can't build a life on that necessarily. You know what I mean? On like randomly meeting and like randomly liking the same things. Like you can like pull out, like if you were to like, like pull like randomly 10 people from a train station, uh, half of them would probably be like, wow, what are the odds? <laughs> like, personally speaking with my own personal perception, I don't think you can build a relationship just on like being similar to each other and liking similar things because it's it's like fun but it's I think relationships go deeper and I think I started to really see this as I got older and I started sharing living spaces with partners and I started to realize yo it's really fun <laughs> until this <laughs> like this is where it gets difficult and I think a lot of people get spooked understandably so they start to get the ick um and I think for me I've understood the ick there's times where the ick is like, right, the ick, you know, when you're you like, you just start to all you wake up one day and you're suddenly repulsed by the person you're with. I don't think this is a unique experience. Um, but if you don't know what what that feeling is, it's just all of a sudden, like, everything's going perfectly fine. And all one day you wake up and things feel wrong or like that little thing that you've just naturally been, you've already been like, doubting starts to kind of eat up at the positive aspects of the relationship and all of a sudden you're like i have to go um i don't so i used to see that as kind of like my intuition being like you gotta go girl like this is not the right one and then like you know then you move forward and you meet someone else and then you think wow good thing I followed my intuition or else I wouldn't be in here. And then you get the feeling again and then you meet someone else. And then you're like, wow, good thing I followed my intuition or else I wouldn't be over here. And then this happens time and 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 time again. If you are the type of person that's kind of like me, agreeable. I made a whole video about being the chill girl. And within that video, I was talking about um, how uh, older men tend to take advantage of younger women. And when you have the chill girl archetype where you're just like, 
like, yo, I'm down for whatever. I'm open minded. It's cool. Um, you will be taken advantage of in that specific situation. There is a more overt power dynamic, a larger age gap that it makes it clear that there's an issue. But when you're dating within your peers, within your city, within just like similar kind of people, you may have a few mutuals. You may not see that there's just like you're just kind of like down for anything in a sense like you're kind of like not doing yourself the service and like giving yourself the respect of actually like deciding what it is that you actually want you're just going with the wind and the moment that you start to feel any form of discomfort you just run and by you i mean me (laughs) i'm talking about myself so within that um i think it's very important to kind of like learn how to filter how to like process those emotions for you to have success in any kind of relationship to go back to the soulmates thing i don't believe in soulmates because i think for anything to work in the long run if that's what you're looking for if you're thinking like yo i'm looking for a long-term partner i'm looking to get married you're not gonna meet the right person where every day is just great where everything just flows where you're not going to have big philosophical like clashes like big like like clashes in general and you have to kind of really work through them that's why when you meet a lot of married couples they often say it's hard it's really really hard and I've like I've always heard that but I've never really like understood with them and I'm, I, I was just kind of like yeah it's gonna be hard but you know we're gonna get through it not nah, it's it's hard it's literally like it feels easier to run but then you work through it and you and the reason why it's hard is not because in that moment there's you you know there's a fight and fights are bad therefore it's hard it's because you're having to face so many different aspects of yourself that you haven't resolved in that moment for someone like for for what you both have and through that you become a better person if you're able to kind of like work through these issues in 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 a supportive and and positive manner but the ick the ick the ick the ick the ick is such um and like a fascinating phenomenon because for me i used to get it and i just used to think oh it just is what it is it's just kind of like you know it's like i'm just dating and i'm young but i started to realize it's happening around the same time every time three to four months it's usually when i run away i'm just kind of like that's when and that's when things kind of start to get serious and the reason why for me it was hard to connect the dots as to why i feel the ick is because i'm someone i've always thought i was vulnerable i've always thought i was just kind of someone that's just like open and honest but something that i've had to really come to terms with is that talking a lot is not vulnerability (laughs) Like thinking a lot is not actually feeling emotions. It's not actually having emotional like proficiency, like emotional maturity. Being over communicative for me is often a shield from feeling because if I can talk through everything, I never have to feel discomfort. So the moment that I I am challenged or the moment that I am feeling maybe a boundary pushed or maybe a a, a set of feelings that I haven't dealt with or that are maybe triggering other feelings that I don't allow myself to think about, I don't really, like, it does not compute. I sense that as, like, oh, nah, this person's a f- this person's changing who I am. This person's affecting me in a negative way. Yep, I knew it. It's that thing. That thing that I knew was the thing was the thing that's ruining this now and therefore things should end. And what I've come to realize is that I just don't know how I should be treated. So where, so within a lot of the stuff, when I was Googling the ick, for example, uh, a few months ago, like earlier in my current relationship, and I, cause this is something I felt before. And I'm like, yo, I really want this one to work. This one's like really, really good. Like, why does this keep happening to me? A lot of the stuff was literally just like, oh, like you've come to like a point where it should end or like it's just kind of like you are just not meant for each other blah blah but I was like nah because like it can't, it can't be like I don't I, like this I'm not gonna meet the perfect person it's not gonna happen and like I, I think you I am the perfect person like I am who I am and I'm going and whoever I am is going to be I don't even know what I'm trying to say like I don't I don't think it's that like I, I really I'm ruining really amazing things for myself because outside of needing to be in a relationship or not needing to be in a relationship I am at a constant like like 
arms away from everything I'm con I feel like I'm living my life through a glass like I'm just like I'm almost there like I see it I just can't feel it so I'm like there's something actually wrong with me this is not other people sure other people have been you know not the best for me in certain situations but at this point it has to be me so the ick is me starting to panic so I did find something in regards to that and it's just like when in things get too intimate I get scared and I'm like that's kind of true and I started really looking at it in the timeline of the things that were going on in, in the present moment and just realizing yeah like this and this just happened and that even though I'm cool with it I'm cool with everything I'm just like yes this is so much fun I am someone that was raised in a very you know emotionally like weird environment so i'm just kind of like i even though i'm just like oh it's cool like in a few like three or four days i have delayed re reactions to everything i may then just get really quiet and like just kind of get weird and then i just started feeling like like ick like everything in my mind was telling me everything that like was everything in my mind was creating my brain was essentially creating problems where there weren't like that was the, the step after the ick after like do I even like this person my brain started literally being like oh not only do you not like this person but here's a, a, a montage of horrible thoughts about this person and like I was like this isn't even my brain right now like what is wrong with me so that's me trying to process all like all of the bad things that could happen. So, if you haven't been able to tell already, I am an avoidant um, dismissive, or what is it? Let me look it up. I'm an avoidant dismissive attachment style. <laughs> so, you can like Google your attachment style. There's attachment style quizzes. Um, there's like secure attachment, anxious attachment, disorganized attachment, so you get a little bit of all. Um, and I'm avoidant dismissive attachment style. As I've gotten older and as I've done more research on it recently, I've realized what that means. Avoid and dismissive. It just means you're a little like who? A little like who? And I think as a woman, it, like especially in cis heteronormative relationship, that kind of can come in like mod in modern day. And I have like really like feminist beliefs and I live a life where I'm just kind of like it's it's not it's not the regular cis heteronormative lifestyle that I want. And like and, and just, you know, I live a an unorthodox lifestyle that I'm very happy to live. Um, it can come across as a good thing to be this way. It, it, it can come across as secure. It comes across as like, I'm, I do what I need to do. I don't allow anybody to like do, like change me. Um, and the closer that people get, the more I get cold. So I start off really warm and sweet and open and excited. And then somewhere along the way, even pushing past the ick. The ick is right at the four month mark, three, four month mark for me. Push past it, I'm good. Everything's fine. Whew. It's, it was just my brain trying to protect me because I normally don't allow myself to feel feelings. Now that I'm feeling feelings, I'm just kind of like, all right, nothing's going on. And then at every single little milestone, every single little obstacle, I just go into my shell like a little hermit crab. So, um... All that being said, that's been something that I've really been having to deal with. I've always been like, oh, it's just like I'm not meant to be with this person. There's something wrong with this person. We're just not good for each other. They should be with someone better. And it's just kind of like, sure, those things may be true. It is what it is. But at the same time, all relationships take work no matter what. Um, and I, there was a lot of work that I needed that I hadn't acknowledged that was hindering any form of intimacy any form of true vulnerability any form of actual compromise and growth and like reliance and healthy dependency i had built myself up to believe that any form of dependency was bad because in the moments where i needed to depend on the people around me growing up like emotionally vulnerably i couldn't i i could not like so therefore whenever i've had to now i don't know what to do with it like i'll do it and it'll feel good, but then maybe two to three days later, I'm weird. I'll be quiet, I'll be weird around the house for like a week, like it's been like a lot of ups and downs, but I say all that to say, there's a lot of work that has to be done. So jumping into that, I don't think that there is an inherently 
like perfect person for anyone but i think there's people that help you on your journey better than others and i think that's then where red flags come in because there's people that do not will, will not have the patience and the understanding that you need in whatever kind of attachment style or like things that you're going through like if you like whatever kind of validation that you need my attachment style i need a lot of consistency i need a lot of patience but something i've recognized is also within my the way my brain works my level of like critical thinking my level of like overthinking I need some valid rational thoughts I can't just like be left to my own kind of like like to figure it out on my own I, I think sometimes I've had a tendency to scare partners or to scare people into kind of being like okay well she knows everything and she seems really serious about it and the way she talks about it is so passionately that I'm gonna just let her be and I've come to realize no 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 don't let me be because I will go and it will be the saddest thing ever when I realize it months later after my delayed um shock has worn off um so I, I I've also been benefit from outside of the patients and the consistency from actual you know being called out in a thoughtful manner like being like I've I'm someone that's constantly thinking about what are my patterns what like what am I doing that that's wrong Ugh, that's so sad right Ugh, I was born and raised Catholic Jesus it's just like what's the I feel guilty all the time there's something wrong with me <laughs> and I just like uh, this 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 mental prison <laughs> um why well, I don't know why I'm laughing like this this is actually sad um <laughs> but as much as I think that I know the little hamster wheel in my brain is turning 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 I'm like oh okay figure something out figure something out figure something out um I have so many blind spots and I know they're there and they're they bug me because I'm just like why why is everyone why am i pushing everyone away like when everyone's just kind of like i don't know you're just chill like you're so smart and i'm like no why aren't you all telling me what's wrong with me so being told what's wrong with me is actually like really great like my current boyfriend is like super like hey you're mean to me and like I, it's it's not even that you're um that we have different beliefs as far as you being independent is that sometimes when you tell me i do something wrong you're really mean and then i'm just like wow i am like i like some sometimes the inner catholic in me the inner punisher my my inner mother um it, it just it's just like what like it's like i can't just tell you you did you you put that in the wrong place i have to come for your for your thinking why did you not think and then in, in realizing that i was just like oh that's why i push people away and why people in the long term turn to just shut up around me because i can't i don't just like say hey you know why did you do that i go hey there is something wrong with you or there's something like you know I, I just get into punisher mode and that's like something bad and that's like me replaying some of the um dynamics that I had in, in my life um okay let's carry on let's get okay let's get into red flags and things that in general outside of my own red flags because I just dragged myself for um 20 minutes outside of my own red flags let's get into red flags in general and just things that I think about when getting into a relationship with an individual things that I tend to notice very early on that are big no's for me and things that I think people tend to make excuses for um that end up kicking them in the butt um so i do not tolerate any form of lying here's the thing about lying some of y'all are liars we all have a tendency to lie i think as a child i definitely lied understandably so it's a coping mechanism i think a lot of us come from environments where we couldn't be honest where honesty was punished you being you was a dangerous thing therefore you had to learn how to not be you therefore you learned that when you told people what they wanted to hear you they were happier or you got what you wanted you never got what you wanted but when you did this you got what you wanted so of course why wouldn't you keep doing this so in many cases you know it's like a lot of people can't help themselves like they don't they come from abusive backgrounds they watched a lot of abusive dynamics play up play out in their um 
in their upbringing therefore they don't know how to break that cycle or they don't recognize the different ways in which it's affecting them and it's affecting others however that's no excuse um for how you should live your life if you don't want that in your life you know what i mean you don't have to take someone and teach them how to be the person for you i think in relationships there's certain amounts of compromise and there's a certain amount of growth that a good partner will foster in you. And I, But I've also, I kind of don't really want to continue teaching grown people how to be grown. So uh, lying is one of those that it's not like, I'm not teaching you how to like, you know, um, wash dishes and how I like to wash dishes. It's like, whoa, whoo. We're like in different places morally. Um, that's kind of hard to kind of to get to the point of. Um, so I do not like lying, big or small. I think a big red flag for me, I think when, when, when you hear that, you're like, no duh, right? Like a lie is a lie, a lie, like lie is bad. But I think sometimes even like jokes, I do not like. I have a very dark sense of humor. I'm not necessarily sensitive around jokes, but jokes that I do not tolerate are like pranks or like, oh my God, I lost this and then like dragging it, dragging it, dragging. I do not get any sort of enjoyment out of like ruining someone's day, out of manipulating them, out of creating anxiety. I don't think anxiety is humorous. I don't think like that style of lying is like, it's healthy. I think that's really weird. I understand that some people is like, that's certain people's humor, but I think it's also uh, something that's very important to take into consideration is how someone jokes with you can be them testing you to see how far they can push you. And I'm not trying to be overly dramatic, but if you're constantly on high alert because you're constantly getting pranked or you're constantly like afraid that something's going to happen, they're, they're getting you into that heightened anxious state that's that for me, I don't want to go from a highly anxious, pressure, emotionally unregulated, all over the place kind of childhood to my chosen partner having me going around the house looking for something that they pretended to lose. I think that's really cruel. Um, so that for me is a really big red flag. I do not like jokes like that. And look, I understand if that's the type of jokes that you were used to and you don't know better and now I'm telling you, hey, I don't like that. And you're like, oh, my bad. And then you're kind of like, yeah, okay, I won't do that. All good. If that's just what you keep, I do not like that. I think that's really weird. I don't know why people don't talk about that enough, but it's like making your partner the butt of the joke is not funny. We can't both, we can't both laugh. It's not funny. You're bullying me. I don't want to be bullied by my chosen partner. Like a lot of y'all got bullied growing up and then normalized it and then said, hey, now I get to be the bully. Let's go bully my partner for 45 minutes. Like that's not fun. So that for me is a really big red flag. And I consider, I group that in with lying. Lying is a really big umbrella. From omitting truths, like not telling you certain aspects of certain details of certain situations to because they understand how it will affect you. Therefore, they're taking the power of choice away from you. The power of like, what, like how they're, they're manipulating how you will perceive the situation to essentially bullying you and pranking you like that's like for me big red flag big red big no i think also in general lying even you yourself lying if you find yourself to be a liar look no shame like if you find yourself like little white lies like oh i wasn't over there i was over here or like oh like don't ever let nobody make you do that shit don't ever don't ever feel like you have to lie for somebody now i understand if you if this is like a matter of like survival do what you got to do. But just if you're in a regular like relationship and you feeling like you have to constantly like like you're on your hand in Montana shit, like you got a double life, like I think you should really like reevaluate that because your your word is losing its power. Like you can't like you're having to to live in a constant state of heightened like fear and 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 watching what you say and remembering different scenarios to keep up a life and a lie. Like it's weird. Um, and that's really sad. So I do not, I never am a fan of lying. If you're trying to leave a dangerous situation, <laughs> lie till the cows come home, girl, you know, figure that out, take your time. Um, and do what you got to do. Like, this is like, that's not, a, we're not talking about morality within that situation, but just within like your general situation, if you just find yourself lying for no reason, like, don't do that.
That's weird. Uh, another red flag. I think, um, so within a lot of cis heteronormative relationships from what I've noticed is that um, some people tend to take pride in the fact that their partner mistreats women. So it's like, oh yeah, uh, like they tend to take pride in the fact that they talk down to other women or talk like crap about their exes or tell you like really intimate details about how their exes were the worst in the world and like how you're better and like all of these things i feel like it, it a good man is good to all the women in his life not just you because you are the special one and not just maybe his mother because that's his mommy a good man is like respectful to all the women that he encounters like it, it's it he he you are not the special one. And I think sometimes we understand like love and affection and feeling desired as like he chose me and only me and I am the apple of his eye. No, somebody that has like healthy like understandings of how to treat humans is able to be empathetic and caring to everyone around them. Obviously with discretion, there's boundaries and like he doesn't have to do what he does for you to every girl he meets on the street, of course. But it's like it like some men are just straight up 110 misogynists and they are controlling with you and then you see that as love and then it that goes left um i feel like if they're constantly talking crap about exes constantly talking crap about women you are next you right now are his infatuation you will be next i think it's very um I think it's very naive and something that we all fall for. It's just kind of like, tee hee hee, you like to, you tee hee heeing about other girls. You're next. You're, as soon as you're out the door, he will be tee hee hee heeing with a new girl about you. So don't feel like you're special. I don't ever allow myself to feel like I'm special. I'm someone, so sometimes people consider talking about exes to be a red flag. I'm someone that like early on, I like to know about your exes. I'm just kind of like, hey, so what happened? What's up? Like, hey, you still friends with them? How'd that go? Like, you don't need to tell me your intimate details. Like, that's like, that's like between y'all. But just like, I really like listen to like how, like what they're saying as far as like, like how it went because I don't consider myself special or different. If you're telling me some wild story about what she did to you and what you did to her and I'm just kind of like, what? Like, I'm not going to think, well, that was her and she deserved it. I think a lot of women fall for that where it's just kind of like, well, she was crazy. So that's why he cheated with 30 women. Of course, because she was like this, this or that. But like, I'm not like that. No, girl, you are next. We're literally like that. We're all like for for people that move in that way. We're all the same. Don't think you're special. That's how you fall into the trap. They will put you on a pedestal just to tear you down. Um, So look i'm every woman <laughs> look shaka khan me i'm every woman you you talk bad about one i'm her too i don't like that kind of stuff it's very weird uh, okay so empty promises future faking essentially i think is what it's called like this idea of like for example i feel like this is this is more overt and i think it falls into love bombing in the beginning if you're just like uh like which is also a red flag but that's not necessarily specifically what i'm talking about but to talk about that real quickly like love bombing in the beginning like i love you so much like on you on you on you on you and then be like oh we're gonna do this and we're gonna have kids and we're gonna do that that's like future faking that's like very dangerous and i think when it's happening in the beginning if you're kind of like if you're aware of that kind of like form of abuse or that form of manipulation rather um you can kind of like steer clear of it. Where I think it stuff starts to get tangled is when you're already like in it. You're already together. You're already kind of like feeling it out. And maybe you're, you're coming across some issues or maybe they've gotten too comfortable or like whatever the case may be. And it turns into like, nah, because like when I do, when I, when I get this, I'm gonna be able to do this for you. When this happens, I'm gonna be able to like this, like this idea of like when, 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 but not now. If someone, like people say this all the time like you know like if he wanted to he would and I've started to really believe that I used to give people like all the freedom in the world to do whatever because I was the chill girl it's just like oh look I don't need like I don't need romantic gestures or flowers like we could just chill and like 
I always felt like it was just like asking for too much to get gifts. I always felt like, you know, like I don't really like need any of that. I'm not materialistic. I don't really like I'm not like my love language isn't like necessarily like receiving gifts. Like I don't need to like receive things to feel special. But at the same time, like I think people doing things for you is not like it doesn't mean that you're not able to do them for yourself. They're just fully committed there. They're like and like I think that this idea of like not like these empty promises this like waiting on the better day this like oh no because you know remember when things were like this it's gonna be like that again soon so it'll be better then like you can have absolutely nothing you guys could be sleeping on newspapers under a bridge and if there was like true love true care and true desire to actually like invest in you to want to be with you to to care about your emotions it would be there no matter the location no matter the circumstance no matter the money i'm not talking about spending money i'm not talking about giving you material things i'm just talking about literally being there for you literally talking to you literally caring for you i've always been kind of like oh yeah they're busy oh yeah this oh yeah that like i think something that's also really like clear that a lot of people don't realize is that people be people are honest and that's something that i've started doing re really recently too is just taking people at their word when they say it believe them like i don't know why i'd be like playing like google translate for grown men like oh it's just like oh no nah, like you know like maybe maybe they're just like they just need more time maybe, no they don't like you i think that's something really difficult to kind of like wrap your head around because like they kind of a lot of people want their cake want want to have their cake and eat it too they want to like keep you here but also get still have access to you but like not give you what you want and like play mind games that they don't like you like they're they're not like they're not gonna make you their if your goal is to have like a boyfriend to have them as your boyfriend if they don't have you if they're not really putting you at that level you're never gonna be at that level it's not like you're gonna like like ha have such great sex like like I, I gotta prove myself i have to have more sex and do that more of this more of that more of that and then i'll be right no like if you if you have already been pushed to the side and you're only like you're only like being seen at nighttime, for example, they don't see you at that, like, as partner. If you're only like, if you really like start to realize like, yo, we only hang out at night and then you bring it up and then it's like, nah, you know, because I'm like really busy during the day and it's just like easier to go over to your house or for you to come over here. Um, and I like to like sleep alone. So like, you know, like I got to be up for work in the morning. So like, it's always just more comfortable if you go home um or if i go back to my like it's like I, I think that for me is just super clear <laughs> um and i went growing up that was not clear at all i think i would be like oh yeah that makes sense and then like convince myself that the little breadcrumbs i was being given was enough to fulfill me but something else that bell hooks talks about in all about love is um how how we all yearn for love how it's so natural and i think in our society it like she talks about it right in the intro like her and her talking about like love with her friends i think at that point she was like in her 30s or 40s and some of her friends were starting to tell her like girl do you need therapy because you just keep talking about like wanting love all the time like and it's just kind of like no this is literally like the most like this is literally what sustains life this is literally what sustains our soul and spirit this is literally the and the law of life the answer to life this is literally everything love is literally everything not infatuation not obsession not like projection but like true genuine partnership companionship support community like family all of that like that that's literally what the whole entire soul purpose of our existence is about is sustained by so to act like we don't need it is just it's such a disservice to your humanity to your soul to your spirit to your growth so to just be like to not take people at their word and convincing yourself that maybe maybe one day they'll change their mind maybe one day they'll want you it's understandable it's natural because we yearn for love so much but do your do yourself the favor of taking people at their word when they say they don't want you. Like, you know, I think there's the cases where you fight for love and then you, you teach you teach a man how to wash his ass and then you marry him. You it's the, the love of your life. But like in most of ca most cases, like it's not. It's really not. Like, and it's really sad because like you know if you're like 
if you're empathetic and you you're like sensitive and you're just like you 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 be on your I'm a healer I want to just love like you know you really feel like you really you can see very clearly what's like what's going on with a person what's what's happened to them the ways in which you can change them the ways in which you guys can grow together but it's just kind of like it's you know it's like it's this is like it's kind of like knowing how to invest your money this one might be a bad investment if they're legitimately telling you I don't want this I don't don't want to grow I don't want what what you have what you are trying to do I don't want that and no amount of convincing is gonna do that um, unfortunately because that's not where they're at right now and you're just going to needlessly suffer easier said than done but just my thoughts something else that for me is a red flag is over flattery and over gifting over I think sometimes especially with me because I'm not very receptive to that kind of um, energy sometimes people really pound it on and it's just like leave me alone it's like i think i've learned to accept a bit and learn to enjoy people and learn to accept that that is the way some people express themselves but i don't really like for me personally the approach of someone coming through like i'm gonna take care of you and like give you all these things personally speaking because i feel like i'm someone that values like a little financial independence and financial literacy i it's not to say that i don't accept things like if we're going out and you want to pay of course pay treat me court me all that it's fine but within this idea of like flexing on you how much i can give you giving you money giving you money giving you money like that that for me is a red flag because it's like what are you hiding what like what's like why can't you just like talk Talk to me like why can't you just like impress me through your like opinions and like maybe just your own unique style um stories your friends anything like why 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 what are you what are you hiding what are you trying to buy from me that for me is always really like off-putting I know some people really see that as like an investment of their time I think for me it's very worrisome personally speaking where I come from a lot of women are financially Ill illiterate and therefore un in, in financially abusive situations where they can't leave, where they become reliant on these men, these men that are like, yo, I'm gonna just take care of you. Yo, let me just pay for this, pay for this, pay for this. You don't need to like, yo, all the, all the things you were trying to do, just don't do them. I got you. I make a lot of money. It's all good. And then you end up broke, nothing under your name no way to maintain the things that were are under your name no work experience for a certain amount of time if you quit your job and just ask that like i do not i do not i never see that as like like uh like a way to move forward um so that's something not respecting your boundaries something else that a lot of people also don't really recognize um so hmm, especially i feel like with like movies and like just like media and stuff for example, like someone's fighting for you. You're like, no, 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 I don't want this. I don't want you to love me. And then like, they're like, no, I love you so much. I will push past your boundaries. I don't like that. I feel like if I'm being kind of clear, I think there's like a way obviously to approach everything to come correct, to really like be like, hey, I really thought about what you said. I gave you the space and time you needed. And this is what I'm coming to the table with now. But I think to kind of like push your boundaries. I'm saying no when you popping up. I'm saying no when you're here again. I'm saying no when you're blowing on my phone. Like that for me is just like, oh, you just don't like, you just will not accept a no. And that will translate to other aspects of your relationship. Another thing is seeing sex as a transactional thing. And that's where the financial uh, uh, abuse comes in. A lot of men move through this world with, I paid for this, I paid for that, I work so hard, the least I can get is some pussy. Like, why can't you just, why, 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 what the, f it's my body, it's literally that, and it's like very, it's like, it's like when you really think about it, it's just like, what is wrong with you? I think it's like, so a lot of people don't see sex as like a way to connect, unfortunately. It's like literally a form of communication. I am required like to give you this because you gave me that. That is not love. That is not actual connection. That's not actual communication. That is coercion. That is a job. That we on, we on a contract. Like what? Just because you did this, I'm supposed to do that? You should want me to want to do that. 
Um, and I think that for me is always a red flag, feeling that pressure or feeling like, yo, if I don't do this, if I don't do this, they're going to leave me. They're not going to want me. That's like, that is only going to get more and more complex. And I think a lot of women fall into that, especially if they're getting overwhelmed, if you're getting love bombed, if you're maybe feeling like, oh my God, I've never been in this situation before. Or maybe if you're feeling like, oh my God, I'm getting so much stuff. I need to, like, I, I want to make him feel good. Or if you're, or, or if you're dealing with an emotionally immature man who cannot self-regulate on his own and the only way in which he can self-regulate is through his pride and if you want you may be being tired or stressed or not wanting to do stuff um is hurting his pride um therefore it becomes this point of contention and it becomes this bigger thing um i think that's something that is for me a major red flag because that means that they don't really on, like they don't really see you and your choices as like something to respect they see it as something to acquire as something to possess as something that they can purchase as something that's like transactional um and that that for me is never true partnership um and that for me can be extremely dangerous it, it, you are essentially indebted to this person within their worldview within their view of intimacy and sex and love um i think a lot of I, and I can understand where it comes from, from for a lot of people. I think a lot of um, love, especially in, our, in a lot of our communities, is that this transactional thing, where it, or conditional thing rather, love is this conditional thing. It, I only get it for as long as I am this way. For as long as I am, I am acting like this, I am getting this. The moment I am not who you want me to be, I lose the things. Therefore, we start to understand love as this conditional, very unstable, vulnerable thing that can at any moment fall apart. Therefore, I will do whatever you need me to do. I will fulfill whatever uh, you need me to fulfill for you. And then that leads to people not having to take any accountability for their own shortcomings and their own lack of emotional maturity. Um, and yeah, and look, Ain't nothing like a scorn man to fucking commit heinous acts against his family. <sighs> it's getting sad. <laughs> okay, so that's it for now. Um, I really appreciate you all tuning into this one. I've lost my voice at this point because it's very late in the evening. Um, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, concerns, um, write them below. Let me know what you guys want to hear more about. I'm trying to put out more and more content. Um, I appreciate you all for tuning in. Take care.